Mr. Ansip, <laughs> what we're trying to look at right now, and we saw this, this video showing all these different issues we're going to talk about today with people from the private sector, with startups, with academia, with people from the commission, with people from the German government as well. Um, the idea right now in the second annual uh, conference is to see how far we've come and how far we have to go in making a digital single market among the EU28. How far have we come so far? In the two years since we announced 16 measures aimed at creating a digital single market, do we have a digital single market yet? Not yet, but uh, we delivered already. Uh, as you said, uh, uh, 2015, in May, we launched a digital single market uh, strategy. In the end of the year, we made our first proposals. And uh, last year, uh, we made those other proposals. And this year, we can say that uh, we reached something, some aims already. For example, uh, roaming surcharges in the European Union will be abolished uh, totally since 15th of uh, uh, June this year. This is a good news for everybody, but uh, also uh, we found consensus in uh, uh, allowing uh, portability of the content. Uh, uh, quite often people, uh, they, they are not thinking about portability issues, but 20% uh, of European citizens are spending at least 10 days during the year in another EU member state, and uh, many of those uh, people traveling in some other member states uh, spending holidays, in some other uh, countries, uh, they would like to get access to their legally bought digital content in their home countries when spending right. holidays in other countries. But because of copyright restrictions, they cannot. Now, we found this consensus, some formal votings, then nine months, and maybe since uh, uh, Christmas time already, our people, they can uh, enjoy uh, portability of the content. 100 million European citizens will be happy. And, what, and so, so geo-blocking, where are we on this geo-blocking? Is that, is, because it's a work in progress, right? Uh, allowing portability, uh, it's also uh, about uh, abolishing of uh, unjustified uh, geo-blocking. But when we're talking about unjustified uh, geo-blocking and uh, about physical goods or uh, services uh, bought online but consumed locally, uh, domestically, uh, like uh, hotel service or, or car rental, then uh, this picture in the European Union is, is um, not so good at all, uh, not so nice at all, because uh, only 36% uh, from all those people who tried to buy some goods and services from another EU member state, so they were able to conclude uh, those purchases successfully. So how do we break through this kind of, their national boundaries? How do you break through those? How do you persuade national governments to play ball? Uh, we are working with those issues every day. 20 years ago, we were able to create single market in the European Union. And we were able to tear down those barriers dividing our member states. But uh, this single market exists only in physical meaning. Digital single market uh, does uh, not exist. And uh, because our life, our, our economy is becoming every day more and more digital, we can see how those barriers we were able to tear down once, they are coming back. Once again, we have to create single market in the European Union. This time, we have to create digital single market uh, because cost of non-Europe in digital meaning is huge. According to analysis prepared by the European Parliament, uh, this cost is even 415 billion euros per year. Now, um, before we go out to the audience, because I would like to get the audience involved, uh, I hope we have the roving mics there ready for this, uh, because we will go to your questions. But let, let, let me go on to um, another issue, um, which is jobs. And there is talk about imposing a tax on robots. We're seeing robots here at CBIT in order to help fund retraining and offset what jobs might be lost. What, where do you stand on that? You cannot stop progress. Uh, 
progress uh, will go on anyway, with us or without us. We are not able to pro uh, stop progress if somebody really wants to stop uh, progress. I believe in progress. Progress always created more jobs than progress uh, used to destroy. So you're saying the taxes, a tax like that would impede the development of robots in, in Europe? I don't think this is a good idea. Uh, with taxation, of course, governments uh, they will, would like to collect uh, uh, maximum amount of money, but uh, this is not the only aim of, of uh, taxes. Uh, the aim is also to have some kind of influence on processes in, uh, in our societies. And um, according to my understanding, it's uh, reasonable to tax bad habits smoking, for example, or drinking <laughs> alcoholic drinks, or, or, or uh, waste of, of natural resources. Uh, those you can, you are, can those tax, are sin taxes. You can, you can tax everything, <laughs> uh, even, I don't know, wheel or, or air, but uh, why we have to stop progress? Train is moving. Mm -hmm. Speed is quite high, yeah. and if uh, we would like to uh, slow down this uh, uh, speed somehow, uh, uh, this is not a good idea. Others uh, will take leading position. Now it's up to us to be on that train or just to wave to this train. I prefer to be on that train. Now, I don't want to, to slow down uh, progress in the European Union with some kind of, of taxes. Now, it's interesting you talk about getting on the train, because that's exactly the feeling I had when I saw the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung interview that they had with you today, which is basically, and, and at least their headline is, it's about 5G. And the objective uh, is to have, of the commission, is to have 5G in Europe, Europe-wide, by 2020, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, uh, we set the uh, aim uh, to cover all the urban areas and main transport path in the European Union with 5G networks by 2025, but uh, there is a sub-aim, at least in one major city in all the EU member states, uh, they have to start to provide services uh, on commercial basis based on 5G uh, since uh, 2020 already. And this is a global competition. Exactly. In I think what, what your point in this article is, let's not get left behind. That if you look at South Korea, South Korea is going to have it in 2018. Yes. They said that uh, since Winter Olympic Games, uh, it means 2018, they will start to use major elements of uh, uh, 5G in South Korea. I took part in G7 meeting in uh, Japan, and they said it very clearly. 2020, once again, Olympic Games, uh, they will start uh, to use uh, uh, 5G in Japan, but also in the European Union. Uh, I saw a news according with uh, TIN, it's in uh, Italy, service provider uh, will start to provide uh, uh, 5G services in Turin uh, by 2020. Ericsson and Telia stated that um, uh, they will start uh, with the major elements of 5G uh, in three towns in uh, Stockholm, Tallinn and Helsinki uh, since uh, 2018. So how, how much... This is how, a global how competition. Exactly. How concerned are you that Europe could get left behind on this? No, uh, no reason to be worried because uh, those were developments, uh, they, they were pretty good ones in the European Union. I'm happy that uh, we were able to reach consensus in uh, uh, 700 megahertz proposal. I know that uh, uh, for people sitting here in this room, uh, 700 megahertz is uh, a really sexist, a sexy topic, but uh, for ordinary people, 700 megahertz, maybe it's, it's not so interesting issue at all. But uh, for 5G in the European Union, 700 megahertz is crucial. We made a proposal according with upper side of uh, 700 megahertz, it will be up to telecom service providers, it means for 5G, and sub 700 megahertz uh, bands uh, will be used by uh, digital telestial, uh, television, uh, uh, they are using the whole bands. Uh, for those purposes today, or for theaters using wireless mics. So, so you're not, 
you're not fearful of this. You think it's it's progressing at at a at uh, a speed that you like, even think... though in this you're kind of warning. Look, guys, let's get on. Let's make sure we're on the train on this. But, uh, right? I, I know uh, uh, that uh, you know, you know how. Uh, how sensitive uh, the issue of the spectrum issue is in the, in the European Union. And so, uh, generally speaking, everybody is able to understand that TIPA cooperation in this field is needed. So, when talking about TIPA cooperation, we are talking about timing of those spectrum allocation auctions, about end dates, we are talking about uh, duration of licenses according to our proposal, 25 years as a minimum. Uh, but in some member states, uh, they say five years, it's, it's enough. I don't think so. I don't think somebody is ready to make real investments if uh, knowing that it will last just five years. Right. Or coverage issues. Those are also important issues uh, in Sweden, in Finland, in Lapland. It doesn't matter in which country. Density of population is less than one person per square kilometer, but uh, there is excellent 4G coverage. But uh, in some uh, Western European countries, you know, tens of kilometers of highways and no coverage at all. Yeah. So we had to have deeper cooperation in the field of, uh, of the spectrum in the European Union. Yeah, but I know some member states, uh, they are worried. So they say it's a question about subsidiarity. It's a question about uh, sovereignty. It's yeah. not up to EU to deal with those issues. So that's what you're but up against. somebody has yeah. to coordinate uh, yeah. those activities. That's right. Are there any questions out there? We only have about, oh gosh, about 10 minutes left. Is there a question out there for Mr. Ansep? Uh, before I get to, uh, let, me go, let me go to another issue that I think is very important because uh, the CBIT's uh, main uh, 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 partner this year is Japan. Now, uh, the European Union has just signed a memorandum of understanding with the European Union on digital. How concretely, what concretely does that mean for Europe? Exactly. Uh, just after uh, uh, this chat here, uh, I will have a meeting with the Japanese minister and, and, and we will talk about data flows. Okay. As we all know, uh, digital business is global business and, uh, and mainly based on data. But trends, not only in the European Union, but around the world, are not so good uh, ones at all because uh, just in uh, the European Union, we already have 56 different uh, laws pushing on forceful data localization in 21 EU member states. Okay. If we will be able to remove already existing barriers from those uh, free data flows uh, uh, just in the European Union, we will be able to cut uh, those cloud service prices uh, for uh, 7.2 billion years within the next five years, but influence on economical development will be much bigger, 8 billion years per year. If global players will be able to have 28 data centers in 28 EU member states, then for startups, this is absolutely impossible. And what kind of message? we will send to our startups when we will continue with the forceful data localization. Stay at home or go to the United States where there is single market with more than uh, 300 million healthy is that, customers. Isn't that what happened to a, a company we know very well that came from your country? Skype. Uh, but Estonians but created. Spotify. Uh, yeah. uh, there are uh, five unicorns in Stockholm just in one building. Uh, yeah. uh, I, we have to ask from ourselves why company created in, in Sweden and decided to move out from the European Union to the United States to scale up. Why is it so complicated to scale up here in the okay. European Union? Why? And, why? And, and the question and answer is, is quite simple. It's, it's uh, because our market is really fragmented. Instead to have huge single market, digital single market with, with more than 500 million healthy customers, in fact, we have 
28 relatively small markets. I think it's also finance too, isn't it? I think it's easier to get venture capital. The same story with finances. Uh, for venture capital, it will be more attractive if uh, there will be uh, single markets and uh, to deal with uh, 28 uh, different sets of rules, uh, it's uh, complicated for everybody, uh, for our startups, for yeah. venture capitalists, uh, for everybody. Right. We have one question over here. I think we can only have time for one question at this point. Okay, if you could please identify yourself. Hi, how are you? Uh, my name is Ahmed Cruz. I'm from Glowner International. We're a global solution provider for technology. Um, and I think the question here is more about psychology than technology, which is harder than technology. You should tell computers what to do and they do it, but people normally, not always. How come in the European Union, trade barriers are down, you can travel from any other country. What do you think, I know there's maybe a, a bigger answer, but what's the single most issue, I mean biggest issue, obstacle that you see for everybody to agree on a single digital platform? Good question. Um, there are lots of them. But, uh, um, <laughs> there are so many different aims and, and different issues uh, that uh, uh, it's very uh, difficult uh, uh, to identify uh, who is against and, uh, and who is really supporting. Uh, talking about the abolition of roaming surcharges, it seems that, that, that why they had to waste 10 years to deal with this uh, very simple issue. Let's vote and abolish those uh, roaming surcharges. But in southern countries, Malta, Cyprus, uh, Croatia, for example, operators, uh, they have to make investments uh, uh, to provide services to tourists uh, visiting those uh, beautiful countries uh, just uh, uh, during the free summer month. And it means they will be not able to get the revenues during the other nine months. We have to protect those uh, operators, but not only operators, we have to protect people living in those countries because they don't have to, to pay uh, more for mobile services because uh, tourists are visiting their countries. But at the same time, in Scandinavian countries, once again, in Sweden, uh, Finland, uh, um, also Baltic countries. Uh, operators are offering uh, very, very uh, generous packages and, and prices is really affordable. So in Finland, people can buy for the same amount of money 100 times more gigabytes than people living in Hungary, for example. And if prices is affordable, people, they would like to consume those gigabytes. In Finland, average uh, consumption is uh, 11 uh, gigabytes per month per person, average for the whole European Union, what's just one tiny uh, gigabyte. So, uh, situations in different member states uh, are very different and, uh, and to, to find uh, this good solution for everybody, it's quite complicated. Or when talking about some other issues, uh, um, allowing uh, portability, for example. In those countries where uh, film industry is highly developed and, and where language is also uh, uh, English, people they're able to, to, to watch those movies in their mother, using their mother tongue, this mother tongue or, or, or just the English, uh, then uh, those companies are more, more worried uh, than uh, uh, countries uh, where uh, film industry is, is not so highly uh, developed. Very different interests, uh, but uh, those uh, differences, they are not just be be for be uh, between uh, member states. Uh, also, uh, talking about film industry, I was uh, in Copenhagen, in their film in this institute, and uh, lady sitting in, on my right hand, uh, uh, delivered a really impressive speech. She's, she was a scre screenwriter. She said that uh, this red dress, nice dress, she bought uh, from second-hand shop, uh, she paid for this dress uh, 30 euros. She said uh, her car is uh, the oldest and the ugliest car in Copenhagen. And message was clear. Please change those copyright rules. But, Guy 
sitting on my right hand, uh, his suit wasn't from second hand shop. Um, he said very clearly, don't touch existing copyright rules. It works well. This lady got an applause and this guy got an applause. So um, there we are. Uh, both ideas are uh, popular but very controversial ideas. So I'm not, uh, I don't want and I'm not able to identify some kind of enemies uh, for creation of, of digital uh, single market. And I would like to ev uh, say even more. Uh, today, the United Kingdom uh, announced that they will trigger this Article 50 process uh, since uh, 29th of March. I was uh, going to ask uh, you about that. This yep. year, uh, but uh, they were and they still are uh, strongest supporters of uh, the creation of digital single market in so, the European so, Union. So what impact do you see if one of the major players behind digital single market leaves the EU? Yeah, looking on uh, digital economy and society uh, index on this ranking list, uh, then we can see that, uh, that uh, there are, you know, on the, on the top of this uh, ranking list, uh, uh, Denmark, Finland, uh, Sweden, Netherlands, uh, Luxembourg, uh, Belgium. Estonia. Uh, Estonia uh, uh, also somewhere there, yeah. <laughs> but the only big country is uh, the United Kingdom. Yes. So, uh, of course, I'm unhappy uh, with this uh, 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 referendum results, uh, but uh, it's up to British people to, to make their choice. But, but you, uh, you uh, they were strong supporters and they still are strong supporters. And as we discussed here already, we will abolish those roaming surcharges uh, totally since 15th of June this year. Everybody will be happy, including British people. What will happen after the Brexit? It will depend on negotiations between EU27 and uh, the United Kingdom. We will allow portability. Everybody will benefit from that. Also British people will be happy, but what will happen after uh, the Brexit? Once again, it will depend on uh, negotiations between EU27 and uh, the United Kingdom or abolishing of uh, unjustified geo-blocking. I don't know how happy British people will be after the Brexit, but I know that we all, we have to work to find good solution for EU27 and for the United Kingdom. We have to create uh, really pragmatic relations, uh, uh, good for both parties. Andrew Sansip, Vice President, Commissioner, thank you very much for joining us. You set the tone for these panels today. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. Let's give a big hand. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All the best.